Hey y'all, it's me. I'm not sure what we're going to go see, but he said, come here, you need to see this. I've, it's happened twice. So I don't know, oops, there, Ferdy, did you see him fly out of his little roost way up in the top of the barn? Hugh bought this this week. I know that's not what he was bringing me to see, but um, he bought this, bought this old tractor for the loader. He needed the loader for hour long. But uh, anyway, so he's trying to get it loosened up because he needs to take it apart and do Hugh stuff to it. <laughs> but yeah, never. Apparently he has much to say today. Hey buddy. Hey sweet boy. I love that crazy dude. He's such a gentle spirit. But anyway, let Hugh finish spraying his penetrating oil on it, and then he has something to show us. Shoo, that stuff smells strong. Groundhogs are peculiar things. Groundhog, something to do with the groundhog. All right. What have they done this time? They've tried to. I had I had this laid on top of that box right there yesterday. Well, he needed a little plastic down. <laughs> That's funny. Where was the groundhog taken off with plastic? What a booger! What a booger! You can see he has a live trap over here, because we have no no end to groundhog holes. They're causing this little building actually to. To cave in. Not undermining it, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's a little live trap. So far, no success. You reckon it would help if you cut those apples open? They'd smell them a little stronger. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Jean maybe. just said she put five or six apples in her traps and put them right at the entrance of the hole. Okay. Well, maybe we should cut them open so they'll smell them. So what's going on, Pops? Hard work. <laughs> oh, Trying to get ready for hay, mowing hay again, maybe next week or so. Get everything out and get it running good. Tell us about the Jeep. Pops has been working, well, let me show you Ferdy first. He jumped up, up over there on the fence. He's getting ready to go in with the birds. Oh, crazy bird. But Pops has been doing a little bit of work on our Jeep. And let's go over here, let's follow him over here and let him tell us about it, what he's doing. You know, the Explorer's got 200,000 miles on it, and this is going to be our next vehicle. Uh, Jeeps. It's a family sickness. Cherokee, <laughs> 82 Jeep Cherokee, totally rust, totally rust free, which is truly unusual for an 82. And, uh, but it needs a lot of work, and, uh, but we're going to, I hope I can have it finished by the time the Explorer dies, which I hope is two or three more year anyhow. It will be. My Explorer but, uh, loves me. But it's, uh, they're getting to be a rare vehicle. My generation, my generation destroyed most of them in the early phase of the rock crawlers. And uh, we collected parts for a long time. So now it's time to start utilizing some of them parts. This Jeep, we had gone after for Jared when he was in Afghanistan or Iraq, one or the other. But I think it's when he was in Afghanistan. And uh, Jared and I had chosen the colors for it. Um, Aaron always called it Baby Dookie. <laughs> he didn't like it's it at all. It's military green and... Uh... The upper part is called tiara or something. Yeah, and it has a little bit of a, a pearlescence in the upper part. But uh, Jared and I really liked it. And as you can see, in all those years, it started colors for a Jeep. peeling and, and everything. And at one point, I had thought I would not go back with the same color when Hugh repainted it. Because it's um, 
it's sad in a lot of different respects and I thought maybe I, we would just paint it periwinkle but giving it some thought I want it to be the color that Jared and I picked out so it will be a good thing but it is it is a, a rust free vehicle you can see even up in here nice 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 well, he's a little surface rust there's no rod on this jeep at all Just now it does have a lot of bondo stuff. in it it does have a lot of bondo in it which people associate bondo with rust no when we got this thing it was about one big den it was wrecked <laughs> so we straightened up what we could and so it's rust free but not dent free But yeah, I can't wait till we get it on the road. I've got to build an engine for it. That'll be a expensive part. And I've done. I've already built the front end and got it in it, and the rear end's rebuilt and ready to go in it. And uh, just a matter of time, time and hard work. But you said you didn't think the en engine was locked up, which was a concern. You said you didn't think the engine was locked up, so that no, was a concern. No, the engine's not locked up, but it's wore out. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm, I'm worn out, too. You haven't thrown me away yet. I'm not going to throw it away. I'm just going to rebuild it. Maybe you can go up to the doctor neighbor and see if he'll rebuild you. <laughs> yeah, we have new neighbors. <laughs> They're both doctors. And they have two little girls. We've got to go meet them. But, uh, yeah, the door has to be lined up. But that will come along when, when the painting happens. This door's just stuck there. Yeah. It's not even, I've not even tried to line it up. I just got it on there enough to keep the cats and the, so the chickens can, out. Can I open it? Huh? Can I open yeah. it? Okay. But the biggest reason I don't want to change colors on it because the oh. dash is still in really good shape paint wise. And uh, all of the inside of the, all of the inside. And of this the one is an oddity for anybody that fools with Jeeps. This one is a, 4.2 liter six cylinder with an actual five speed. And it being a five speed vehicle, we have built the differentials to four, 409 gear ratio, which will be fine for where we live. We don't, we're not on the road a whole lot, but it'll be just fine for what we do. It has a little sheen of mildew all over it. It's gonna have to be cleaned really good. And the dash pad's uh, starting to curl on it. I gotta take it off anyhow. Yeah. I gotta take a windshield out of it to put the trim back on it. It's a big job. Hopefully. For me, well, 20 years ago it would have been a year project. Right now it's gonna be a two or three year project. That's mostly because I have a time so tied up. Be honest no, about it. I don't enjoy mechanic work as much as I used to. I really don't. Yeah. Until I turned 50, I loved being a mechanic. After 50, it started hurting more. <laughs> Everything hurts more. It does, absolutely. I'm going to finish spraying the oil on this old tractor over here. All right, Pops. We'll see you later. He didn't hear a word I said. <laughs> he's already taken his, his hearing aids out because he knew he's... Look at the sky, guys. Is that not gorgeous? Yay. Well, I've got to go down and cut sunflowers. I was not planning on being in the field at all today. But Hugh and I ran out to Tractor Supply. He needed some penetrating oil. And as we passed the field, even though Chelsea and I cut really hard Friday morning and Saturday morning, and I thought, well, those sunflowers would be nice until uh, Monday morning. No. Those sunflowers, it's so hot and humid, those sunflowers popped open so very quickly. All right, let me put my bucket right there so I'll remember to get my, my bird seed when we come back. But I'm going to just walk over with y'all and look at the sunflowers real quickly and determine whether I can leave them until in the morning or not. And if not, I'll get my buckets and go get her done. I think this here flower farming <laughs> must be a seven day a week job.
not really crazy about that. I would like to have one day a week off. But right now, now eventually, when we have enough, enough flowers growing so that we can hazard some waste and leave flowers in the field just for um, critters, it will just be a two or three day a week um, cut. But right now, because our sun, our sunnies, we were out part of the week this past week. Hope that doesn't happen again. We're trying to prevent that by planting about 600 a week. But anyway, we're not to the point of having another row ready to bloom yet. So we got to save and rescue all of these that we can. But that's the goal for this next year. We know a little bit better now how to plan for it, how to, how many to plant, and the succession planting, we have a little bit better idea for it, so that we're not, um, we're not panicking. And next year we're also going to have sun, um, have sunflowers. Next year we're also going to have florists. So we'll definitely have a market for any overabundance we have. You see, you can see these little short sunflowers decided to pop all of a sudden. It was a suddenly. And when they open up this much, then they're susceptible to damage. These guys look pretty good, but this is where we usually get them. We get them when they're to that stage. Aren't they gorgeous? Beautiful, beautiful little creatures. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to just go ahead and get down here and get these guys. Look at this, guys. Is that not gorgeous? Yeah, I'm sorry, dudes. Should have been down here at the crack of dawn. Grabbing you out of this field. So far, I'm not seeing any, any real bug damage. So that's a good thing. Look at this little perfect dude. They all look pretty perfect. Yay. And I'm not really seeing a whole lot of the Japanese beetles either. And that's good. But see, this is the extent of the field that we have for this entire week. There's not many in there. I mean, there's quite a few, but this might get us through two weeks. We'll see. Because there's, there's quite a few that are still tightly closed. See, these guys haven't even started cracking yet. But um, what we have to do is keep them cut early and we put them in the basement. We have an area of the basement that we have an air conditioner set up. It's our little cool station for now until we get the cool room built. And that gives us some extra time. The sunnies are a little slower opening when it's cooler. But, yay. Let's go get the bucket and my little cutters and get her done. I hope y'all are having a beautiful weekend. It is beautiful here. That's, that one's about, uh, three weeks out and these few yeah we're still probably going to have some some bare weeks some slow weeks for the sunnies until we all of these successions we have planted start coming this little area right here these are the ones that we had problems with uh, the groundhogs there's not many in there but maybe enough to get us through that that third week if they will hurry up and jump up and start blooming well not too fast guys not too fast <laughs> wait till week after next and then and then you can jump up and then uh, these sunnies uh oh I'm seeing some Japanese beetles over here I shall go get that's not a Japanese beetle what in the world is that girls look at the size of that dude Wow 
I don't know what he is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get rid of him just in case he's a good guy. I don't know all the good guys yet. But I hope that uh, that there's not tons of them if he's a bad guy. That would be bad. He's ginormous. All right. So these guys, you can see, they're beginning to open. So we'll have, I don't know, maybe about 50 in this little patch. So I think that we'll get these guys and then these guys and hopefully I'm still seeing Japanese beetles though so I've got to go after my my weaponry <laughs> and hopefully by the time those guys have bloomed and finished I don't know who's who's having some work done on their house or their road then hopefully these guys will be up and producing the sunflowers we've just misjudged and miscalculated and um, I bought I bought some little solar powered um, I'm not sure what they are I think they emit some kind of a, a high-pitched sound and so I'm very very much hoping and there this is to keep away uh, rodents like groundhogs and moles and voles and uh, all of those sorts of things so I'm hoping we get those up and going and that they work well I know I'm going to get them up and going right now in a few minutes but I'm hoping yeah 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 um, but I'm hoping that, that they'll be um, up and going and, and do the job that we need them to do well here's going to start my water pump and I'm going to do that before I cut get these seedlings you can see them coming up they're beginning to pop through yay you we have them absolutely everywhere we have three beds like this that one down there we've not covered over with the the netting yet to keep the crows out but Anyway, we're staying ahead of the of the sunflowers now. Alright, y'all. I'm going to get off of here and take care of my watering. And then go cut those sunflowers. And hopefully it's going to rain this evening. That would be lovely. And I will talk to y'all within the next day or two. Love you much. That's a good man right there. i got to tell you. Bye-bye.